Hey guys, we have a killer tutorial in store for you today. We're gonna look at creating the visual effects sequence we just saw. First, we're gonna use the free version of Mocha to add these fire elements. Then we're gonna use some of the newest AI tools for rotoscoping to make our lives easier. We'll look at the brand new Rotobrush 3 and a third party tool called Mask Prompter. These tools are so impressive and only gonna get better. So let that sink in. Finally, we're gonna create a normal map and do some relighting right inside of After Effects to get realistic interaction from the falling fire element. And I'm gonna give you all of the tips and tricks that you need to create your own fire shots. It's gonna be lit. So I got these really cool elements from Action VFX. They have such unique fire elements like these burning poles from side angles, this ceiling fire, this falling debris, and fire climbing up the wall. I've always really wanted to play around with these. So I had my friend Corey dress up as the same thing he dresses up for Halloween every year, Michael Myers, and come to our studio and film this scene. So first we're gonna take our clip into After Effects and track our camera. We didn't really get a usable track. I tried matting myself out before tracking. I tried adjusting parameters of the tracker, but nothing gave me a result with a high solve quality. So how can we solve this? Well, instead of solving a 3D camera, we're going to use planner tracking to track surfaces in the free version of Mocha that is bundled in After Effects, Mocha AE. Now, I was most excited to get this burning pole on the hand railing, so first I dragged this in. So now I'm gonna select our footage, I'm gonna add Mocha AE, and open up the interface. Now I'm gonna draw a spline on the left wall here, and I'll right click when I'm done. And then I'll track backwards and forwards. I found that this gave me a more stable result than just tracking the railing. And then I'm going to come to the frame at 1309 and click this button to expand the planner surface for this frame to the corners of the frame. And I'll name this track Left Wall. And now if I come back into my composition, I'm going to hit Shift and 7 to set a marker. I'll name this to something like Reference Frame to remind me that this is the frame that we set in Mocha. So I'll take this Pole Fire and pre-compose it. And I'll move all the attributes to a new composition. And I'll name it Pole Fire Left. And I can go into the Mocha AE effect, select the track, and apply it to pole fire left. And you'll see that it now moves along with it, but the perspective isn't quite right. So we're going to copy the footage into here, make it a guide layer, and freeze frame it on this frame. So as long as the perspective is right on this frame, it should move correctly. You can manipulate it however you want, but I found that pre-composing it and rotating it so that it's straight up and down allowed me to more easily warp it with a mesh warp effect. And now we have this fire moving perfectly with the railing. Now I'm gonna go back into Mocha and I'm going to uncheck this gear icon from processing so that Mocha doesn't try to track it anymore. And I'm going to add a few more layers to track. First, I'm going to make a garbage mat for Corey and myself. So I'll draw a spline around myself and track it forward and it looks like it's doing a pretty good job of staying with me. I'll stop it when it comes off screen and set this frame to the layers out. I'll rename this to BD and click the gear icon. Then I'll come to the last frame and draw around Corey and track backwards. And I'll stop here as it starts to mess up and I'll just keyframe a few of these frames here. I'll rename this to Cory and then I'll click the gear icon on this one as well. Now I'm gonna draw a spline on the wall here and call this wall bathroom. I'm going to draw one on the foreground here around the railing and call it top of staircase. I'm going to make this one a little more detailed as we'll be actually using it for a mat later. And then I'm going to draw one on the ceiling. I'm also going to draw one on the right wall here, and I'm going to make sure that the right wall is below BD, and that ceiling is below Cory, so that it will ignore the garbage mats that we made when they're tracking. And I'll do one more here for this area on the fifth step. And then I'll track backwards, and it's tracking all of these at once. Okay, so I got a warning telling me that the fifth step terminated prematurely because I'm crossing in front of it. I'm going to use that track for the dropping fire element, so I don't really need any tracking data before that. I'll hit OK and go to that layer and set the endpoint so that it doesn't try to track it anymore. And I'll continue tracking backwards and forward. Now if I scrub, you can see the tracks are pretty good, but the right wall is a little shaky. I had the most trouble with this track, but since it's below the foreground railing, it's also ignoring that area that we drew. So I'm gonna move that layer below this and we'll track it again. And it's working a lot better now. We'll come back to the same frame that we set before and set that for each track. We can come back and adjust this for any layers that we need to see above or below the current framing. And we won't be using these garbage mats, so we can skip these. Then I'll close and save Mocha. 
So now I'll go to this frame that we've marked and I'm going to drop this wall ceiling fire side asset and adjust it so it fits the scene. And then I'll take this side ceiling fire and I'll set both of these to screen. I'll pre-compose each of these layers, moving all of the attributes to a new composition. I can set these to screen mode again, and then I'll come down to our footage layer, and in Mocha, I'll create new track data, and I'll select the plane of the wall bathroom, and I'll export it to the wall ceiling fire. And then I'll use the ceiling track for the ceiling fire. And if I scrub, you can see that these are now staying really nicely. Now, I'm going to go to the Map tab, and under Visible Layers, just select the Railing Foreground layer. I'll click Create AE Masks. Cut this mask, create a new solid that is comp size, go to the start of the comp, and paste it. Now, I'll make it the mat for both of these layers, invert it, and there we go. Now, we just need to rotoscope Cory. Okay, here's where it gets fun. We're going to duplicate the footage layer, and the first thing that I want to show you is a third-party plugin called Mask Prompter. This absolutely blew my mind when I saw it. I'm going to add Mask Prompter to the footage and draw a mask around Cory. And look how awesome that is. I'll turn Mask Prompter off and keyframe the box around Cory. And if I turn it back on, you see that it does a pretty good job. And if it loses him while he's walking, I can adjust these keyframes. This gives us a really good starting point. You can also activate these points to add or subtract an area. And since I started this shot, Mask Prompter has added text-based inputs. This is crazy stuff. I'll delete this mask and go to Text Prompts and hit Add Text Input. It creates a new mask and renaming this mask will be my input. I'll type man at top of stairs. And if I scrub my comp, it's totally staying with him without me having to adjust any masks or points. Near the end, it wants to switch to me, so I think that it's just looking for any sort of person with this prompt, but this is still amazing. If I switch the model to high quality and the edge enhancement to medium, this gives me a pretty usable mat for both people. And I could combine this with a bit of hand roto. One of the cool things about Mask Prompter is that you can do up to five point prompts, five mask prompts, and five text prompts all at the same time on one layer. And you can try out Mask Prompter free with a watermark, and if it works well on your shot, it's $50 to purchase. So we had a project recently that required a ton of rotoscoping work, and we needed all the ammunition to throw at it. So we picked up some licenses of Mask Prompter, and we joked that with how fast things are moving, you know, Adobe may just integrate something like this soon, or we'll see Rotobrush 3, and a couple weeks later, Rotobrush 3 was released in beta. So when I found that out, I switched into the beta version to keep working on this shot. You use it just like the old versions of Rotobrush, so I'll come here and double click on the footage and draw on Cory. And I can hold Control or Command and drag left or right to change brush sizes. And I can hold Alt to subtract areas. Rotobrush has gotten noticeably better and faster with each release, and you can see that this third version took a huge step forward. I'll freeze this. For this shot, I ended up using Rotobrush instead of Mask Prompter, but they both gave me really quick, really fast results that would have taken me so much longer back in the day. I'll delete the Mask Prompter layer and trim this layer. Then I'll pre-compose these and call these Cory and Top of Staircase, and I'll reselect it as the mat for these fire layers. Next, I'll drag this falling debris out and place it on the fifth step. Then I'll mask the bottom of it a bit so that it looks like it's partially occluded by the step in front of it. And I'll follow the same process. After adding a bunch of fire elements, I thought it was strange that both railings were on fire and all the rest of the fire was kind of in the background. So I wanted to add this fire coming through these railing bars. But if I do all of my work on the reference frame, they may be cut off when we pre-comp them. So I'll go into Mocha and duplicate wall right and call it wall right last frame. And then I'll go into the last frame and expand it and hit save. Now I'll go to the last frame and I'm going to solo our footage and I'm going to take the same diagonal pole fire that we used before and I'm going to draw a mask and position it so that it just kind of peeks out through one of the bars. Then I'm going to lock the mask, turn the opacity down to zero, then I'll duplicate it, move it to the next opening and repeat. And then I'll offset these. I'll make a mat for the railing and the edge of the opening and then I'll pre-compose all of this and name it right banister fire. Then I'll apply the mocha track. Next, I pre-composed all of the fire and I called it Fire Elements, and I'll set it to screen. I added a tint effect and set the amount to 15 to make it a little less intense, and then I added Deep Glow. Now, Deep Glow is one of my most used plugins at the time of this video. It's also $50 and well worth it in my opinion for both motion graphics and for visual effect shots. I always wanna provide free alternatives if I can, and I'm sure you can stack the built-in glow effect, but Deep Glow is really worth the money in my opinion. 
I set the exposure to 0.1 and then I duplicated the effect and set the radius to 2000 and the exposure to 0.01. I continued the process from there to add more fire, smoke, and destruction elements. I added burn marks and blood to the walls. A darkened blend mode worked well for most of these to blend with the flickering light on the wall. One trick I found for other elements was to use a solid part of the wall, set it to overlay, and then use the item as a track mat to now have that item flicker with the lighting on the wall. I also added a little bubbling to the left wall by drawing some displacement and using that as a mat for the CC glass effect. I added dark smoke elements by the fire as well as some foggy smoke elements. I used all of the smoke elements as a mat for an adjustment layer with a Gaussian blur effect on it behind the smoke to help sell the atmosphere in the room. I even tried Photoshop's generative fill to see what kind of fire destruction it could do to the walls. And while I got some strange results, I also got a few cool elements that I was able to use in the shot. Now we're going to get into the close-up shot and really turn up the heat. To rotoscope this shot, I also used Rotobrush 3, along with the Refine Mat. So after rotoscoping Cory, I used the Refine Edge tool to draw around the hair and make sure I got all of the small details in the hair. I've been hearing good things about DaVinci Resolve's relighting abilities, and I thought it would be cool to try to use that alongside a fire element to get some interactive lighting. So I did some research and I tried it, but ultimately I felt like it was better for relighting scenes, but not great for precision of a light moving through the scene. So I looked up a way to relight in After Effects and I came across a free plugin called Normality, and I'll link that below. Stefan Mining, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, made an absolutely awesome tool that easily allowed me to move a position of a light in After Effects and mirror the position of the falling fire. So I exported the normal map that I had made in Resolve and used that as a reference for normality. Now you can only create this in the paid version of Resolve. My hope was to tell you that since Michael Myers is standing pretty still, you might be able to get away with creating a normal map in Photoshop from a single frame and doing some minor tracking. But this was the normal map I got out of Photoshop. Corey looks like a pretty flat object here and we really couldn't light up one side of his face with this. I'll link a tutorial for normality below and they mentioned two softwares, Normal Mapper and Shader Map. Now of course you could create a similar effect with some effects and masks, but being able to create this automatically with a normal map is pretty cool. I created a new point light and I keyframed it so it moved along with the fire element. Then I selected all of these 3D layers and hit AA on the keyboard and turned off Accept Lights so that the point light doesn't affect them. In the normality effect, under shading, I'll change the color to a gold color I'll pull from this fire element and I'll change the blend mode to screen. One final touch that I did in both shots is creating a light wrap to mimic the way that the bright light from the fire would spill or wrap around objects. I used this free handy script from AE Scripts. I pre-composed any bright fire elements, moved them under Cori Roto, and then ran the script. I changed the blend mode to lighten, and for this close-up shot, I upped the contamination to 150. And finally, it's hot, so we're going to add some heat distortion. Heat distortion happens because of the refraction of light in hot air. There are a few ways to do this, including the turbulent displacement effect, but I used the heat distortion plugin from Video Copilot. If you thought this tutorial was fire, then make sure to share it with a friend and like and subscribe. And if you have any questions about what we covered, leave a comment below and we'll see you on the next one.